Now, have you ever wanted to add a shadow effect to your icons on Elementor, but for some reason Elementor doesn't have the style setting to add a shadow effect to your icons? Um, well, let me go ahead and show you guys how and exactly what I'm talking about. So as you can tell, I added this box shadow effect to my icons here. Now, believe it or not, you cannot do this within Elementor settings. It, they do not, for some reason within the icons, they do not have that stylizing setting. It's kind of weird, but this is just the method that I use to be able to have this nice box effect on my icons. And I'm sure you guys are gonna wanna learn how. Now here's just a little proof that you can't add the shadow effect to your icon. So I'm gonna go into the builder really quick. And I selected my box icon here. And as you can tell, I don't have a shadow effect option for some weird reason when I'm within my icon. And you actually can't do that with your other icons as well. So if I were to add just an icon here and I go to settings, you can tell I do not have a shadow effect option, which is kind of weird. So that's pretty much what I'm going to be showing you guys how to do. If you guys really enjoy this video and it does help you out, make sure to squash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. And if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any of my videos. So let's begin. So I'm going to be using my hiking club website that I made a while back just as an example. So go ahead and create a section and make sure that it has one column. And then let's go ahead and just add our title here really quick. Let's just set up our, our section in our column and add our title. So I'm gonna do why choose us. Of course, you don't have to do this. I'm just setting this up so then it all makes sense. Just gonna adjust this and have that font there. Maybe enlarge this a little bit. I'm probably, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna copy this style here and go ahead and choose this one here. Out of this, all right. Then I'm just going to add some spacing to the section here and do, do 50. Oops. Do actually yeah, remove this and let's do 50 from the top and 50 from the bottom. And then let's go ahead and change the background color. I'm just going to use, I'm just going to do a gray background color. Not too grayish, but. Um, just a light gray, very light gray, uh, maybe a little more. Like I said, this is optional. You don't have to do this, but it kind of makes the effect look a lot better. Um, so we'll do this for now. I think this will work. Just make it a little bit light. All right, so that works. Okay, so let's go ahead and just add my um, icon box here. Now you can do this actually with just one icon as well. Just by doing an icon, you can do it, this method as well. And I'll probably show you guys that towards the end of the video, but we're gonna be doing an icon box instead. Just so then everything makes more sense. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and just stylize this a bit. I'm gonna go to my style here. Um, my content i'm just gonna make my text black i'm not really gonna adjust uh the font too much i'm just gonna just gonna leave it as is i'm probably just gonna change this icon i did i did uh, upload some some uh custom svg icons that i'm gonna use i'm probably just gonna use this one for this example and then on the view very important let's make sure we set this to stacked all right and then let's go to style here and my background should be white, and then my icon color is gonna be black, just because it goes with my website, but of course you can change it to however you would like. I'm gonna add a quick hover effect here. I'm gonna make the background black, and then um, the icon white, and I'm gonna make it grow when you, when you hover over it, so we have that nice effect. All right. So now I wanna give it that shadow that I showed you guys. Um, so, what we can do is instead of just adding the CSS, how I usually do, I know that some of you guys are asking, well, how do you get the code or the icon um, box or whatever you want to call it? And I'm going to show you guys how I actually do that. Because sometimes I do get those questions. So I'm going to go, I'm going to right click um, my website here when I'm outside the editor and I'm going to go to inspect. So make sure you click right click and then inspect. And then we're going to go ahead and inspect this. So we're going to on the, on the left side here, we're gonna click on this um, this little icon here with the arrow in the box, and we're gonna choose our icon, but we're not gonna choose inside of it, we're gonna choose a box. 
all right just the uh, the circular area in the box then we're going to go ahead and try to find the icon c and you can easily see through here okay we have elementor eight elementor element enter element and then we just kind of keep scrolling and you kind of see the, the 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 css class that makes sense and look at this we have we have elementor icon that's kind of where i find it i can tell that this is the the css class associated with this icon here so i can easily what i can do is i can just start this from scratch just to show you i'm going to copy this this um the css class here and then i'm gonna i'm gonna go into my advanced settings and then i'm gonna go into C, into my css now before i even add the css class we want to go ahead and add selector and then the css class all right and the reason you want to do that is so then it doesn't get applied to basically if you were just to do this and then just leave it as is and add your stylizing it could apply to maybe other stuff you know, on your website and it could affect it and that's why you want to put selector because you only want it to apply to this box here and that's kind of why you want to go about doing that okay so now within our curly brackets that i just added here i want to go ahead and add my uh, css stylizing that i already have for it for my box shadow so I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna grab my box shadow. And in a minute, I'll show you guys what this, what the web kit is in case you guys don't know. Um, and then as you can tell, it's gonna automatically add my shadow. And it's kind of cool. It gives it that really cool effect that I, that I honestly really love. Um, there we go. And it kind of goes with my website cause I actually have been using a box shadow as you can tell. Um, and it goes very well. So. If we want to go ahead and adjust the shadow, we can actually do it through here. So this one here is a spread. So let's say I do 60, right? As you can tell, it's really going to spread out. But I don't want the spread to be that um, that large. So I'm, that's why I set it to negative 30. That's just what I'm using, but you guys can use whatever, um, whatever uh, option you guys want to use with that. And then here we have um, 50, and this is just a blur. Wherever you see the, wherever you see, I'm, 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 I'm adjusting it right now. This is actually um, the blur of this. So let me just give you guys more of an example so you guys can see exactly what's happening there. If I were to do right now, I can do 50, right? Or I can set this to zero, which it won't give any blur. But if I set this to 10, you'll start to see the blur. If I set this to 40, you'll start to see the blur there and 80 and so on. But I'm going to have it set to 50. I think that's where I originally had it. At. Actually, I need to go ahead and just totally forgot what I had it. So I'm going to just copy this again and paste it right in here. I think we had 50 and negative 30. So that's what I'm going to be using. And those are just the settings that I have there. But you guys can go ahead and use that. So uh, the part that I did want to go over was a web kit here. So this, this, um, this style is actually just for, um, for iOS, Safari, and pretty much anything that's, that's uh, Apple related. So that's, that's where web kit is from. And that's why you want to add that as well for Safari and, um, and iOS, um, browsers. So, so we're going to leave that as is. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this. But you know what I'll do instead is I'll go into my positioning. I'll go into inline and I'm just actually I'll go custom and I'm just going to adjust this really quick. And I'll probably do about uh, 270 pretty much where I usually put it at 260. And I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate these here really quick. And then we can click on my section here and we can move everything out of space between. Um, maybe we can give these more spacing. Actually, You know what we can do is we can do another one. And then I would probably end up spacing this out. Maybe do like some padding from the bottom or something. I do about 30. You can go in here and just change the, your icons to whatever you guys would like here 
Or you know what? Actually, I only want to do three icons. So really quick. I know that this is already stretching it out, stretching the video out a little bit. Um, I did want to cut this a little short, so I'm just going to add a quick intersection. And then I, I thought I had an intersection in here, but I never added it. So let me just go ahead and remove this one and add these in here really quick. So I'm just showing you real quick how, I'll, how I would go about doing it. Um, and then we're just going to do space between, and we're going to adjust the width. Okay. It all makes sense. There we go. Now it says heading, heading, but like I said, it's just an example. So, and real quick, uh, something that I would do instead of just having, um, sometimes you just don't want to have the, C the, the CSS class um, on all of these. It's better just to have it once and it works for all, just so then you don't have this, this extra CSS um, that is pretty much duplicated. So what we can do instead and, and, and just have one, code that um that works for all of them is this is just what i like to do i i'm gonna go into advanced and i'm just gonna remove this here and i know that it's removing it but i'm gonna copy this one and you can actually just apply it to this to this uh section here go into advanced selector and then i'll do it for all of them just make sure you have selector so it only works um within this this uh this intersection I just wanted to show you guys that real quick. Um, and then we, I think I wanted to show you guys also your icons. So if I get just any icon here, it also worked the same way. Um, this one might be actually called a little bit different. So let me go into icons here. Just so then for those of you that want to know how to do that. Fast, let me go in here. I think we got to make it just stacked That's probably the problem there. Got to just make it white. Make this black as well. Got to fit it into that intersection somehow. So as you can tell now that we have that effect because it's in that intersection and that's where we had the CSS applied to. So you can do that as well. Um, it also works with the, it's pretty much any icon, social icons, any icons that you may, that you may have actually, they work this, they should work the same way. You can do custom here and then Maybe turn these white and black, and I believe we just need to make these. We can do the border radius to 100. I believe we just need to make these bigger, but you can apply those to however you want. You can tell a certain size, you'll start to see them. You see, you can just adjust that CSS so then it works with these with these icon boxes as well for your social icons. Um, but that's completely up to you. Just wanted to show you guys that really quick, and that is pretty much it for this video. Um, I hope it helped you guys out. If you guys do have any questions on this, just feel free to reach out to me. And um, thanks for watching.